difference between fasting and living a fasted life? John the Baptist lived a fasted life. Meaning John wasn't necessarily just having days he fasted, but he lived a fasted life. Now, How, how how many people know why we fast? How, why do we fast? Huh? I, I can't hear you. To break your flesh. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Let me hear somebody else. Uh -huh. Sacrifice. Okay. Okay, let's hear, uh, Fatima, let's hear you li lifted your hand. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, uh-huh. Okay, who else? Wh wh who else? Woman of God, you left your husband at home, so tell us. <laughs> Let's see a black queen. <laughs> you gave the correct answer out of everyone. Everyone, what they said was right. Everything that everyone said is correct. But this is everything you mentioned was for you. It was not for him. Because when you fast, you don't benefit God, you benefit you. The only thing that benefits God is your humility. Because God cannot resist God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So a man or a woman of God ought to look for an opportunity to be humble before him. Because you might be in the world, but if you're humble, God will show you grace. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Psalms 35 verse 13. Verse 35, 13. Okay, Psalm 35, verse 13. Mm -hmm. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. I humbled my soul with fasting. So fasting is simply, it's simply a conduit of your humility. If you fast to break your flesh, it's about you, it's not about him. The only time fasting starts to interact with God is your desire to humble yourself. Because you can fast if you go to Hindus, they are fasting. You go to Buddhists, they are fasting. You go to Muslims, they are fasting. Their fasting is the, no comment, funniest of them all. They wake up at 5 a.m. and eat. <laughs> eat like crazy and then the whole day they don't eat. And then in the evening they eat, sundown they eat. And then they wait for 5 a.m. again, they eat again. This is not fasting. <laughs> Intermediate fasting. <laughs> uh, there's no fasting in there. Ah, Mama, you know this. I grew up around a lot of them. I went to Madrasa. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's a whole different story. But the point of fasting is to humble yourself. So when you capture the part of humility, God is compelled to speak to you. God is compelled to give you grace for what you want. The Lord is compelled. He has no choice. He has to do it. Did you hear it? He has no choice. He's compelled. So when I fast, my primary goal should be I want to humble myself before God. So when Daniel told his brothers to fast, 
They did not fast because they wanted the dream interpretation. Their primary point of fasting was to humble themselves to ask him. You are the only one who knows what everyone dreams because you are the one who gives it anyway. Lord, have pity of our lives. We are coming to you because you are the one who has the answer. We pray thee, please reveal it to us. First night, God answers him. First night, God gives him an answer. Now, if you can control yourself to live a fasted life, what is living a fasted life? You eat, but you never overeat. Because once the body gets comfortable and it feels in control, it becomes prideful to God. You have no discipline for yourself. That means you have no discipline before God. The lighter the body is, the more subject it is to you. You see, athletes have broken their flesh already because they put themselves through things that they would not want to. Normal human beings will never. But you can break your flesh and not break your soul. Because breaking your soul is the place of humility. Because breaking your flesh, you become strong because you can control it. You can put it through the fire. But it doesn't mean your soul has been broken. So our fasting must be a reflection of our soul, not a reflection of our body. If you're understanding me, push one, push one, push one, push one. Can I see how many thumbs up we have? Can you push the thing a little higher? Okay, perfect, perfect. Ah, guys, we are almost 4,000 people. We need more thumbs up. Let's get the like buttons higher. So... people are getting it how do I live a fasted life stop letting your stomach control you eating too much makes you unspiritual you are lied to that you need to eat five times a day that's not actually true you need foods that give your body what it needs. You don't need to eat too much. It's not true, actually. Especially for a regular person who doesn't, who does regular workout, and it's not like Vanessa, who's a professional fighter. That has to cut weight, that has to do this. They have to take their bodies through extreme. So they need fuel to perform a certain task. But to go through the day, you don't need that much food. It's actually, we have become addicted to food. And therefore, our senses have become dull. So if I know a day that I want to dream, I want to initiate the dream. Because you have to get to a place where you can dream dreams. You can dream dreams. Not God to give you a dream, but you can choose to dream a dream. This is the highest maturity in the dream realm. Whereby I can dream a dream. He did not say God shall give them dreams. He says, and they shall dream dreams. They shall, meaning they will be the one that dream. If you look at Daniel, Daniel said, and I saw visions of my head upon my bed. He was the one who was initiating the dream. The dream didn't just fall. So stop waiting for God to push emergency button.
in a week you should check in to see what's happening spiritually to you in the beginning of the week to know what is going to happen in the end of the week to make sure you fulfilled your spiritual obligations and your physical i'm talking to the wrong people I'm trying to teach you how to be more intentional about your spiritual life. Not to be somebody, oh God just gave me this. Oh God just gave me that. You have to be intentional. 